Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Peter's Prism, uh, the Jordan Peterson podcast, where uh, I have my guest today, emphatically, Matthew Watson. You might know him from his monopoly of monotonous, monogamous, mono mono monologues. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Of course. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, but uh, first things first, I've noticed that you've been making quite a fool of me on the internet. Making fun of my voice whenever I'm brought up. You look at my ideals and say they are something of a caveman. Now, I don't see why you would do that. Like, come on, man. Well, Mr. Peterson, I'm Dr. Peterson, it's, it's, I promise you, it's, it's, uh, you're just, you're just the bud of one of many jokes on our podcast. No, I'm it's the bud. Do you know, do you know the, do you know the essence of a bud? Yes, it's not pleasant. Well, depending on who it is and how much they've cleaned. Well, listen here, bucko. I think that you have no room to judge someone when you have no n no idea the even confines of the inner workings of my unfathomable mind. Sorry, Dr. Peterson. I will, uh... What? I, I'll do my best to, to ease up on the... No, on no, our... please, please. Please share with me your mon monopoly of monotonous, monogamous, mono -e mono monologues, Matt. Please. I'm thrilled. Um... Mm-hmm. Well, that has been Jordan's prison. Uh, <laughs> More like Jordan's prison. Okay, fuck you, asshole. Sounds you like fucking. A, sounds like. <laughs> you gotta beep that one out. It sounds like a Muppet. Uh, is our ad agency gonna email us? Like, guys, you can make fun of Doctor Peter. Two percent nicer next time. We actually, I don't know. I don't care. We can share. No, no, we, we can we, share. We, we got we, we got asked very politely if if we were to make fun of Bob Saget again. Oh, by the way, hello, welcome. It's the Super Mega Cast, episode one ninety five. I'm Ryan McGee. This is my buddy Matt Watson. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, uh, our ad people, our agency baby, they ever so kindly told us to stop making fun of Bob Saget. So specifically, we did it once. We specifically the it. vice president. Of, <laughs> he was like, he was like, it, it, it was it was at the end of, a, of an email that was unreal. He was like, by the way, guys, uh, it's it's totally okay. Like if, if you want to, you know, make fun of Bob Saget, but but maybe next time just just 2% nicer if you can. Yeah. We're like, Thanks. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Bob, I'd like to issue a, an apology, a formal apology from both of I us. I like to issue my nuts on your face. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that, Bob? That's not 2% nice. <laughs> that isn't. I got to bleep it out, maybe. No, I mean, you don't have to. Because you said it was a joke. It is a joke. I love Bob Saget. I grew up with him watching no, dude, Full House on I, Nick at Night. Come on. Bob's great, dude. Bob Saget's... What about America's Funniest Home Videos? Before they had a... Before he... <laughs> <laughs> Just beep that one out, yeah. too. Uh, before they a had A lot of that, beeping this episode. Yeah. Who's that guy that does America's Funniest Home Videos now that has the voice like this? Oh, what? You know what I'm talking about? I know he did Dancing with the Stars, right? Yeah. You're talking about yeah. that guy? Yeah. Is, is there no new guy who runs AFV, or is he still the guy? Is AFV even still a thing? I feel like the internet killed AFV, because now people just Or maybe it, AFV but... has a YouTube channel that's very popular now. Ooh. Send your submission. I loved that show. <laughs> AFV, America's Watching Funniest my dad Home Videos. All the time. So good, dude. There'd be some, though, where, you know, most of it was family-friendly, fun. But other times, there would be videos that were kind of straight out of r slash hold my feeding tube. I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a good show, though. What a, what, like, what a pure era of television, because um, that's just before, like, everyone could just spread videos around. And it was like, if I want to see some funny... Uh, content, some some good videos of people's dogs falling off a dock into a lake or, or a kid slipping and hitting his head. It's yeah. like, this is the place to go. And you get the laugh track. And what about the clips where the host would, uh, they they track his head onto like different characters. Ooh, remember yes, that? Yeah. Yep. You know, you know, I, I think I remember a few episodes of this that I didn't like. It was because they were the themed episodes where it was like, episodes only about babies. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, yeah. I, I want to, I want to. A large selection of the different types of whether it be funny laugh out loud uh oh goofs, whether it be someone hurting themselves, kind of like a cringy interaction verbally, which never showed up really on the show, which would have been fun. Ooh, imagine like an like an America's Funniest Home Video show, but like Complex produces it and it's just like World Star fights. It's like America. What is the fuck is that? Is it, it sounded like a huge spaceship was flying over. That deep rumble? It was like... <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, but like... like yeah, meanwhile, up in the spaceship. Oh, are you sure nobody, nobody saw it? No, 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 no. <laughs> no one noticed. Don't worry. No, uh, at the worst of it, some, some dumbass will probably, you know, think about it real quick. 
think of the impossibilities of that noise, and then probably fail to question it further, thus keeping us hidden. <laughs> Not mention it on a podcast. <laughs> uh, like, like they need to, World Star needs their own show where it's like World Star fights, but you have the audience laughter and everything. And then every week they invite the, the runners up and they, you know, they have the, uh, like the winner of the first, first prize best fight video. Speaking of stars. <gasps> Keemstar. Oh! Woo! <laughs> Let's talk about Keemstar. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so H3H3 and Keemstar will not be discussed any longer uh, on this podcast. Thank you. Th- thank thank you. you. That was the discussion. Thank you. Anyways. Thank you so much. I'm proud of you for that one. <laughs> for a second, I thought you were going to go into it, and I was like, <sighs> <sighs> no, no, no. I've, I've, I mean, I've caught up. Like, I, I know the gist. I just don't I, I, care so I, much. I didn't watch. the. Vi- okay, the videos are a little bit I've long. Seen all the, I've seen the videos, just. They're long, so I just, I don't know, dude, I just don't give a fuck. It's like I can't be bothered, you know? It's kind of white noise. Yeah, because I feel like this same thing has happened No more, times. no more. We will not. Yeah, we're done, drunk. we're done, we're done. We will not be dragged into this. Okay, sp- uh, going back to America's Funny Home Videos, actually, I, one of the things I love about living in Los Angeles <clears throat> is the goodwills here are, uh. The goodwill towards men? It, it, oh, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Everyone's so kind. No, but the, the goodwill stores are packed with, uh. Uh, various, various things that you wouldn't find anywhere else. And one of my favorite things is if you go to the, the DVD or the video section of any Goodwill, um, it's, it's packed and loaded with for your consideration Emmy copies of TV shows. So you'll get like these cool little rare, like, uh, for your consideration, uh, DVDs, which basically for those who don't know, the show will like produce like a special package to send to the, the Emmys. Uh, like the judges for them to like be like, oh, for your consideration. Oh, this is nice. I have one from Malcolm in the Middle where it's like three of the best episodes. Ooh. And it came with a Malcolm in the Middle themed popcorn I haven't opened. So it's like a little bag of popcorn, which I bet would still pop actually. But I don't know. It's it's sacred at this point. No, I cannot you, open it. You don't it. want to pop it. It's like, it's like a, a big like tri fold out thing with like the discs and the popcorn. We'll, we'll, we'll get back into this discussion. Just a thought popped into my head and I wanted to ask you to see if you knew. Yeah. Um, when it comes to alliteration... Is it purely, is it just the sound, the beginning sound of something? Like, could I use knife and knight in an alliteration? Yeah. Or because it's not the same letter, it doesn't start with the same letter. Is it the sound or the letter that's important? I'm pretty sure it's just the sound. Okay. I th- right? I think, I think, <clears throat> you know, like nine nights gnawing on n- n- newspaper. Like that, <laughs> no, 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 no. What? That's a, uh, that's, that's alliteration. Yeah. Even, even though the nights is... K, K okay. which I never got that. That's where the fuck did that come from? K, like the K N thing, uh, to make sure that I don't know. Just it, to confuse it looks people cooler. that want to learn. Like English. when I think of a knight, if it was spelled with just an N, and, but that K leads leads me to suspect something's amiss, and that I don't understand completely the complexities of a soldier in the medieval times. I do have to say that K is a very like royal looking letter. Like I'm looking at it right now, and. If, if nights were just called night as in uh, th- the time of day or the, the the night cycle, it wouldn't look as cool. But when you throw that K, it's very like uh, noble looking and very. Why do some words start with K-N? The silent K in words like night, knock, and knob. Knick-knack. Is a remnant of Old English Wait. and wasn't silent at all, but actually pronounced along with the N. Is only Nobody... the Nick and Knick-knack with a K or both? No, both have Ks. Knick-knack. No? Yes. Knick-knack. Nick. K- K- yeah, yeah. Yep. It's both, both. I was thinking of, uh, mm. do you remember that kid's toy from when we were kids called Knickknacks, like N-I-K-N-A-K, and they were little, like, uh, almost like Roblox characters, and they had the little arms oh, you yeah, could, like, yeah, do yeah, this yeah. with. I love those things, dude. I remember we had a big box of them in my uh, classroom in second grade, but I couldn't play with them because everyone would steal them before I got to. See, my Lego phase, while I did like Legos, I, I mainly just, uh, I <sighs> think my phase was Bionicles dude. in terms of putting oh, stuff God. together. Don't get me started, man. Dude, I just want I just want one of those spherical ones again. Those were my favorite bionicle. The ones that could roll up in the ball and then you could just Yep. Whoop. And they and they would like roll out of it. Oh my god. What a genius design. I also, you know what? Uh you're about to go on lockdown. Uh big time. Yeah. So, you know, Ryan and I have only been seeing each other uh just here and there throughout the week to record because we're we're really trying to social distance. Uh but Ryan soon has a, a loved one visiting that has AIDS, so uh, he's going to have to quarantine himself two weeks before they get here, and yeah. they're going to be here for a week. So, you know, Ryan is going to be, you know, we can't record Super Mega for that whole time. And I'm thinking, 
You should get yourself some Pionicles for that time. Oh, you need oh, something to do? Okay. Get some big Lego sets and yeah. just... Why? <laughs> While my uncle beans with AIDS has <laughs> uh, is just out in the backyard playing with Lego, I'll I'll be focused on my Bionicles. No, he'll be in the backyard playing with Lego, and you'll be inside playing with Lego. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? okay, okay. Dude, I love Legos, man. Now I want to get some Legos, dude. I've always been a little scared to get into Legos because I I know that if I got into Legos, if I I'd, I'd probably get into Legos, like get into it. Mm -hmm. And Legos is an expensive hobby. Uh, they're expensive. They're like they stupid are. expensive well, for what they are. They're also, they're not as simple as one might lead you to believe. Mm -mm. One dark and stormy night, I went over to, I was about to say Uzi and Aaron's house. <laughs> 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 little, little Uzi Aaron. <laughs> Susie and Aaron's. And uh, we built Harry Potter Lego sets. And let me tell you, it took me two full Harry Potter movies, essentially. Okay, maybe like two and a half uh, Harry Potter movies to finish one set. No, man, that shit is not to be taken lightly. That stuff is, it's not, it's not child's play. No. On the box, it says uh, up to age 99. Does you it? Know? Yeah. Does it really? It's like 13 to 99? Three to 99. <laughs> three no, to not 90. three. Three's too young. I think it's like seven to 99. Whenever they won't eat the bricks. Yeah. So if you're 100, fuck you, you can't play with Legos. Uh, oh, if you want big boy Legos... Something that's even better than Legos? Get some Gundams, dude. Okay, I thought you were about to say Mega Blocks. No, dude, those are little boy Legos. That's even worse. <laughs> I know. I was like, what are you doing? If they want to sponsor us, we could do Super Mega Blocks, though. A little playset would be fun. Super Mega Mega Blocks? Yep, Super Mega Mega Blocks. Super Super Mega Mega Blocks. Why don't, uh, have you ever built a Gundam? No. I think you would love it. Well, that, that, that truly is the top tier. No, no, I'd say top tier is ship in a bottle, but Gundam Ooh. is below that. I, that, it, it's, it's just below that. It's, it's all because around the same tier. Ship in a Bottle is top tier. Yes. Lego. You, you so would it, you say that Ship in a Bottle is like the most complex Lego? Yeah, honestly, because don't you literally assemble the whole thing inside the bottle? Mm -hmm, with little tweezers. That's how you do it? I think Damn. so. Or do you assemble it, slide it in, and then pull a thing no, to you, set up you the make sail? No, you make the boat, and then you, uh, and then you make the bottle around it. So you out, oh. so you actually have to learn how to make glass. You have to get in the glass. Also, that's blowing. false. I feel like you just make the ship inside the bottle, dude. I would love to do With a ship little, in a bottle. It's just that's that's too much, man. That's that's too. But I would feel every time I look at it on my desk, I'd feel so like. I, I did that. Dude, with Stuart Little and so many other uh, stuff, I always expected to like run into my dad's room and find him with a tr like a big train set or like a remote control boat. I mean, we did get remote control boats and stuff, but. I don't know. Whenever you think of dad hobbies, you'd think of drones, remote control helicopters and all that stuff. I love RC helicopters. My, my, I think my dad and I, we liked this remote control plane, uh, except until one time we accidentally flew it into a, a horse pen. <laughs> Didn't and then, get it back. And then we were like, should we go near those horses? <laughs> <laughs> we chose we chose not to. That that could go one of two ways. You just you get the plane back, or like you just get mauled by one of the horses. <laughs> mauled by a horse? <laughs> I'd love I'd love to live in L.A. where instead of like coyotes running amok, it's like ho beautiful, majestic horses, like fucking ripping people's cats and shit dude. apart. Because you would just like because sometimes I'll look out my front window. It, I, I have looked you, out my front window and seen coyotes you walk by. Just like walking down the street, all of a sudden just hearing behind you faintly just. Dude, and it just boom. <laughs> yep. Starts to fucking like rip, like start starts biting at your neck. If horses had horns, then they'd be dangerous. Horses are mean, dude. They can bite. They are mean, dude. They can bite the shit out of you. I don't like that. Like, <laughs> girls love horses, dude. Like little like horse girls. Because like, they like, fuck them. That, no, they don't. Yeah, they do. Oh. It's because the horses have big penises. Is that why horse girls are into horses so much? It's like a, <laughs> yeah. It's like a subconscious thing. It's like they just have such big cocks. It's because while they're riding the horse, uh, it stimulates their their nether regions with the, all the bumping and grinding. That's why I like it so much, dude. It gets me horny as fuck. It's kind of like I remember when I was when I was young. This is like when puberty first was like, hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, buddy. Like kind of like knocking on your door and it's like, huh? It's like as garlicky breath. You yeah. Know, oh yeah. 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 But, the but, type of like whisper in your ear that makes you like yeah. the hair on your neck stand up like ugh. I was doing. I don't know what workout I would call it, but it's the machine. Maybe. Maybe you know what, Matt. It's where you have your arms like this, and then 
imagine both legs are doing it. You lift both legs like that, except you're kind of like up. On oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it, it works out your abs and your legs and shit. But I remember one specific time I was at Gold's gym and I was doing that exercise as a young boy, mm. and all of a sudden I noticed the my gym shorts were rubbing the tip of my penis, <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason it felt good. So like. Every now and then, when I would be at the gym, I'd specifically go to that machine to be like, that oddly feels good. Why does it feel good? This is before I knew anything about masturbation. I like to, I like to think that, that you still do this. Like, you'll still go to the gym. <laughs> Not to work out, but just to get on that machine. But I, I had no idea what was going on. I was like, this itches, but it itches good. In a good way. <laughs> this, so that's the best way to describe that. Yeah. I think when I was younger, I was like, this itches, but in a, in a different type of itch. Oh, my God. It's the ad read genie. It's I, the Ad Read Genie. Today you will take an ad read about VPN. Kaboom! So we, as in you and I and everybody else should know, we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? Yeah. But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to hack the President of the United States. What? Just kidding. But you can use it to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. So this whole week, I have been using ExpressVPN to binge Doctor Who on UK Netflix. Whoa! Doctor Who! It's so simple to do, Ryan. I just fire up the ExpressVPN app, change my location to the UK, refresh Netflix, and do it's there! Oh, whoa. See... As a VPN scientist, I can say without a doubt that ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries, so just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. Do you love anime, Matt? Yes! Well, you can use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. Oh my god, but it's not just Netflix, Ryan. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. Hulu, BBC. The BBC iPlayer? Yes, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. You ever, uh, you ever had a YouTube video you want to watch, but it's blocked in your country? Boom, you can watch it with ExpressVPN. Oh, wow, I'm so ecstatic, and I, this isn't fake excitement. I, this is real excitement, because... Because there are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is it's ridiculously fast. Like faster than Sonic the Hedgehog. Whoa. But there's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD no problem. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all of your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on a personal device or on the big screen, wherever you are. If you visit our special link right now at expressvpn.com slash supermega, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's right, free. So support the show, watch what you want to watch, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash supermega. Doctor It's in the description. That's interesting, um, but you you gotta try uh you gotta try Gundams, dude. I got one if you want it's one. It's the painting part that kill that. No, that no, no, I think no. Uh, me I in. have ones that are already colored, like oh. the plastics already colored. You put Ooh. stickers on, which is actually the Wait, hardest part. Are you telling me that like, Ryan? I think you'd like to. I think you'd like Gundams, but uh, not building them, like putting stickers on them. No, <laughs> you, <laughs> like, you you do build them. Yeah, okay. Like you basically, it'll come in these sheets of plastic. Because we went exactly in blade. Japan both times. We went no only with the. Did we go to the Gundam store both times or just with the... Yeah, we went. To, okay. Just went, with the uh, no, 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 no. We, you and I went only once. Uh, we didn't go with Aaron and Susie. Okay. But you and I went with the Tucker bros. Aaron and Susie, we kind of just stayed relegated to the kind of Shinjuku area. Yeah, the area we were in. Well, all I know is even though there are tons of places else I could go visit, I think one of the first places I'm going to plan a visit to will be Japan when this is all over. Specifically because I was planning to go to Japan with a bunch of friends and then it got canceled and like literally we were going to go like from late March to early April. I, I think that they issued like the nationwide lockdown like the week you were supposed to leave. Yeah. So oh, it was God. just. But just I think, knew kind of weeks coming up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember you were like, you're like, oh, man, my friends are like, no, 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 just wait. Just wait. Well, I, I don't know why that. my friends sound like that. Just I was wait. saying that, too. I was like, I was like, oh, dude, this this coronavirus stuff isn't going to be that bad. You can just I, you could still go. I mean, it, over like a period of 24 hours, it's it was like it's not even because of medical knowledge. I knew that coronavirus is going to be that bad. I just knew that it was I'm I'm specifically talking about only myself and I'm being selfish here, of course, but 
I knew my luck would make it so that I would not be able to take this trip that I was really excited to go on. But I've already been to Japan twice. It's not like it's getting any more Japan knee, you know? You know, you know what? Speaking of businesses and stuff like that, guess what's closing down for good? I just what? found out this morning. The hi hat where we did our very first super really Mega live. Yeah, is it because of all this shit? I think so. Because so like it's closed down for good. Mm -hmm. Like the hi hat's been a pretty famous. Yeah, low yeah. like not like a big venue, it's but like it's, a low been, profile it's been venue. a very famous low profile. It's fun. Venue. It's such a cool venue. I've been to a bunch of shows there. It's uh, it's where we did our first like three super mega live shows in L. A. and uh, the staff is the super drunk nice. drawings. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was it was so much fun. I uh, loved the venue because the food was right there. For yep. I don't know. It just oh, had a had good, good vibe. They had that good like uh, was it like Korean fries or something? Mm -hmm. But what sucks is uh, you know, to make money, those places have to do shows. So well, think about touring companies too. Think about like uh, suck it real good touring <laughs> pussies. I'm just kidding. Why don't you go make coffee, Aaron? <laughs> go go make some beans. Uh, it seems go like make some beans out of your farts, gamer boy. Oh. Uh, it's a trend lately. YouTubers are starting their own coffee companies. So I have a feeling I'm going to go ahead and call it Aaron Hansen will start a coffee company. I'm just going to go ahead and throw you that out there. Easily. Anybody could. You just go to like a, what, an independent supplier. You find kind of like a, a bean you like. and Slap then, your name on it. Boom. Yeah. I saw Jack Septica is making coffee. I know, is he? Yep. Top of the morning. And I saw uh, Ian from Smosh has, has a coffee brand. I, I It'd be fun to. It'd be really fun to have a coffee brand, but like, I don't know. I'd, I'd want to sure actually really make good. and package it yourself like Hank Schrader does with his beer. Does he? Do you remember Hank Schrader in the- in Oh, yeah, yeah, the, but I'm guessing the real, the real no, stuff. No, okay. No. I got okay, excited. Did you see that? I thought at first, like I was watching, I was like, is he getting on, is he going on cold? That's what I thought. <laughs> He's like, I might have to go to Australia to find out. Yeah, they, they Jesus got a, Marie. They got a cameo of uh, Agent Hank Schrader for Cold Ones, and I thought he <laughs> was, was actually so going on Cold Ones. I was like, "What?" <laughs> it was. Um, it's funny. I had one of his beers though. One of the. Uh, is I it bought, good? Yeah, it was really good. Um, but when you said that he hand does it for a second, I was like, "Did he? Did he package that beer?" No, Hank Schrader did not. Yeah. Uh, Dean what, Norris. Dean Norris. Damn, dude. Which is the actor's name? It was. It was good. I was on Cameo recently. Uh, I figured out how to browse all because Cameo does not have a very good app for browsing like who's on there it's 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 they basically you only see the people they like suggest and that's it damn it sorry guys there's like 50 flies in the podcast room right yeah, now yeah it's flies. ryan was about to get one but uh you it, see the focus on my face yeah i saw you just you know you're supposed to actually like clap above it because they move so fast when you clap above it they'll fly into you oh, doing really? that yeah that's apparently a like great that? way to kill flies okay yeah. anyway uh <clears throat> i was on cameo there's a lot of good people on there dude a lot of, dude, Neville from iCarly. Is he? And Spencer. Wait, really? Yeah. And uh, Beans. Beans is on there. Not your Uncle Beans. Beans. Uh, it's this weird thing where it's like, yeah, you're on Cameo because you're a celebrity and you're going to, I don't know. There's just something weird about Cameo, at least from my, the way my brain processes the idea of it, at least, is that it seems like a very weird step down. Yeah. It, like it seems like a very kind of like, well, not for some people. The people that charge like six hundred fucking dollars. Well, it's because the way they are. It's just uh, like them on an airplane. And it's like, hey, haha. <laughs> Even though to them, it's like, ha, people are people are paying to hear me talk. At the same time, you know, yeah, you're you're at this point, damn, where you're filming videos on your cell phone and uh, having people script what you say, and I, making um, fun of you forever. I would like to try cameo maybe for like a weekend, but I I could I don't I could not. I didn't. I, I keep up with. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, Ethan Crank Gameplays did it, and he was like, "Yeah, I got like four thousand requests," and I was like, four thousand? Yeah. Uh, Tay Zonday's on here, bro. Under musicians, look at. Okay, so you know uh, how much do you charge per cameo usually? Five bucks? No, 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 no. How much did Ethan charge? Uh, I don't. I don't know, but like most people, the average that is like swindler forty, fifty bucks, mm -hmm. sixty. Um, like people, for instance, uh, you know, the actress, uh, Susie Essman from Curb Your Enthusiasm, she plays his, uh, manager's wife. Mm -hmm. She's $350. Okay. Uh, some people are fucking ridiculously expensive. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner was on here for a while. 
Hey, girls. Like two, <laughs> like two, like two How's it going? Here's Dean Norris, $209. You know, do you remember me on Keeping Up with the Kardashians? <laughs> I love playing with my little helicopters, girls. <laughs> my pushy sopping wet, baby. Oh, you do it so well, man. You should, you should, can you? My throbbing clitoris, baby. Can you do a, a cameo, but it's just you <laughs> impersonating Caitlyn Jenner? <laughs> And, but I still say it's no. I I name it Bruce Jenner. Ooh, and then I, and I'm wearing a MAGA hat, but I'm still dressed up as Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, you know what I'm saying? God damn! Facts don't care about your feelings, Nimrods. Ooh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ryan's spitting facts over here, ladies and gentlemen. God, the fucking goddamn fly. Dude. I know, I know. There's okay. By the way, that was that. I'm I'm not that. That is not something I'm going to do. Not at all. There are people in the comments who get mad whenever we have to explain a joke. Be, and I think that's our fault because we there are times where we don't explain jokes. Well, it's and because we give too much believing. credence to the people that will take the joke seriously and get mad about it. And yeah. it's like, we should probably give credence to the other side instead of the people that get mad about it. Give you know, credence maybe to maybe the we should go back to the era where people are always questioning whether we're joking or not. Dude, there's so many fucking flies in this room. I know. How many are there? One, two, two three. three. There's, one there's more than three. There's I know that. There's, there's, there's one in that there. general area dude there's one in this cup is it dead yeah good so there is a imagine that one dude it's like i got to the sugar and then it couldn't get out (laughs) fuck he's he's like a he's like a chilean miner well they got rescued yes he's dead well i didn't want to use an example of you know people who actually died unfortunately he okay he's like that diver that got stuck upside down in an underwater cave dude fuck the i Oh, there's this video that YouTube keeps recommending to me. That's the most, that's one of the most horrifying stories. Oh, it's, it's absolutely terrifying. It would drive me psychologically insane. I just want to be dead. I'd want to be dead. And Wait, instant. are you talking about the guy that was spelunking and he gets, he goes down the thing, gets stuck upside, upside down, down yep. and they and couldn't they, get him out. Yeah. There's people like you, they can see him. They're right there. In fact, it's just like in a cartoon, they would be able to grab his legs and like pull him up. You know what I mean? No, they said that, but, uh, if they pulled him out, it would break his legs, which would kill him because of his blood circulation, because of he'd been upside down for so long. He just, they just had to leave him there to die. If I were him, I'd be like, break my fucking legs. And if I, I'm going to die anyways. Yeah, it's like I'd rather <laughs> die from the shock of my legs being broken than suffocating in a cave. But that I, is definitely one of the more terrifying stories on the Internet. It's very you, famous. YouTube keeps recommending uh, this one video to me for some reason. Uh, maybe you've seen it too, but it's, it's this cave diving video where these people go into this little hole called like the hell hole. And it's just this little kind of like slit that they climb down in. And then it's just them with like GoPros going into this super underground series of like chasms and tunnels that are like only as wide as their body. So like you can only see like their shoes going through and like, where, where is the fun in that? I don't Uh, understand. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've done under like caving and stuff like that before but i haven't done that to the like done it to the extreme like that like i've done it where i was like certain people in the group couldn't go through because they were just too big and i luckily wasn't that big at the time so i was able to squeeze my way through but it's like this cool area it's this big open area where people lay out their sleeping bags and then there's two different uh there's a bunch of different things you can do you can basically go and explore the cave and like climb through all the crevices. Then there's also like I think like an an underground lake in the in the cave, which is cool. That stuff's so cool. But it's just like the video is called Claustrophobia Engaged, and it's just minutes of like like a compilation of them just going through like to to have a to have a conversation where I, where I'm not feeling overwhelmed like on the phone. Usually I have to. I have to be pacing or like, you know, with me on the podcast, I talk a lot with my, I, I'm a big, I talk a lot with my hands. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have to be moving to so express you, myself. Yeah, express with your hands. Yeah. I express myself by moving a lot of the time. But, uh, if I, I, one of my worst fears is just, I think one of the, yeah, when I was younger, I was always scared of getting paralyzed. I was always scared of like falling and like hitting my collarbone or I don't know, just something, some where it's like, like you're trapped inside a motionless body. Yeah. That's, that is terrifying. Like everything's working, but I'm, I can't move. And like, it's that whole thing where you don't think about it because your brain sending signals because you're like, oh, I'm just moving my arms. I'm doing all this shit. But like, imagine 
thinking that and like nothing's nothing, happened. Nothing, yeah. There's this horrifying video I saw and I it's I think it's up there with the diving videos in terms of um, disturbing videos I've seen on the internet. It's of this wrestler, uh, I think like maybe you, the mixed martial arts wrestling. And he goes for this move where he essentially makes himself a little more vulnerable because he's up in the air. His opponent then counters it, which he wasn't expecting, and flips him to the ground really hard. And all of a sudden the guy starts being like, ooh, ooh, like screaming, but it's because he landed on his neck and he was just like, he couldn't move. And like that thought, like seeing that was horrifying. Was I couldn't he paralyzed even after that? Mm -hmm. he's, <sighs> he's been able to work on it and he's able to walk again. But it's not not the same. Not the same, dude. Yeah, paralyzation is is really. Well, it's crazy how sensitive it is when you think about like your spinal column and like I hate thinking about it. one wrong little it scares thing the shit just out of me. Shuts it all down. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that we'll have a cure for that one. But there's day. a lot of people who go through those unfortunate circumstances and come out of it. Uh, while there's a lot of negativity surrounding it, there's a lot of people who come out. I'm not going to say better, but they come out of it. Yeah, like not fully paralyzed, like yeah. not a quadriplegic. I, uh, or I just I, their mindset be, like transitions. They're like, oh, this is just the new stage of my mm -hmm. life, which, you know, it's there's a whole lot more to acceptance when it comes to trauma. Right. Acceptance is one of the processes that you go through, but it's not it's not just like, well, just accept it. Every uh, except the horrible thing that happened to you. Every issue in your life does not matter anymore at that point. It's yeah. like, oh, I got some bigger problems. <laughs> I knew someone, um, I didn't know them, my, my family did. So you're uh, a liar. Well, I, 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 I'd seen them before. Okay. And I went to church with them. Uh, <laughs> and we went from one of my friends to, I had- I didn't say one of my friends. <laughs> Whatever you said. What, I said I know. I knew oh, someone, okay. well, I didn't know them. Uh, but Did you know them in the Shakespearean sense, baby? Yes, yes. Uh, he got in a drunk driving accident. Uh, hit a. This uh, isn't funny anymore. No, yeah, I know it wasn't funny. And he's been in a vegetative state for like over a decade now. Where's the punchline? Um, they asked one time, they asked him to like blink if, if he was cognizant and he did, which is really scary to think about. What if a gnat flew in his eye or one of the 20,000 flies in our office, right? We guys, we haven't like over the weekend, something changed in the office and there are flies everywhere, like big ass adult flies. I feel like... This is the, you know, when, when God sent down his wrath with locusts and frogs and disease, this is one of those trials he's sending down onto the super megaplex because we haven't been recording enough content to his, to his liking. He's like, you fucking idiots. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to send a plague of flies down to the sewer. Oh, right by my face, dude. You see all that? Yeah. What you do you think the next, well, okay. If flies is the first plague, what do you think the second plague will be? Did you say frogs? Yeah. Is that, is that? Do you not remember that? No. In the Moses story. Is that why there's frogs in Magnolia? The movie? Maybe. You know how like it it's very frogs? biblical, yeah. Dude, a plague it's of frogs would be pretty sweet though. Iconography. You know I love I love frogs. Oh my god, actually. You know how they you boils, there were frogs, yeah. there were I think locusts or some Definitely kind of locusts. Bugs. Uh I think the worst one was that the um firstborn uh would die unless you smeared uh, goat blood on on your door. We should, I wish we still did that kind of shit. <laughs> like you're just walking through like suburbia and just goat blood on some of the doors. Well, we're not afraid of God anymore. Yeah. Some well, people are. I'm terrified of God. <laughs> I might have, it's funny you bring this up, Ryan, because I might have, uh, I might have done something by accident. Something really, You might really have bad. awakened a beast from, f from the nether. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what um, happened? Were you playing with a, with a, what is it called? A Ouija board? Well, no, 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 no. I, I refuse to do that. Uh, Why? It's a board no, game made by fucking I bought, Hasbro. I, I bought one and or whatever. everyone I knew was like, get rid of that. So I, I got rid of it. But. It's so dumb. It's literally made by like the people who make life in Monopoly. Don't give it any credence. Basically, uh, did you see my Instagram story over the weekend? The bugs. The bugs. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm at my desk editing something this weekend and Harrison runs inside and goes, Matt Carson, you you gotta come out here and, and see see these bugs. They're everywhere. So I walk down the street um, to, to my neighbor's house and there's these bugs I've never seen before. 
In fact, I have a, no the white one. The, yeah, the, okay, yeah. never mind. I sorry, it took Literally, a bit because for some reason, of them. you know why that didn't click? Because that thing just didn't register as a bug. It in doesn't my look memory. like a bug. It looks like it's some weird <laughs> isopod thing. And uh, the did trees, you find out what it was? Yeah, the trees are all the way to the top, filled. They're raining down. My neighbor's house is covered. The roof is covered in them. The street is. What are they? I found out that they're ladybug larvae. And, uh, well, ladybug larva, but they're walking is like one group. No, that, that, the white thing was one bug. They have like a fuzzy exterior. But that looked like it was like at least that big. No, it was How like tiny. It was, was like it? it was like about that big. Oh, it was like real small. Okay, but... your your phone made it seem like it was probably as big. As oh I yeah, I, I zoomed in a lot. Like the, the the first digit of my thumb. But I found out that they're ladybug larva. And uh, see, like they're pretty creepy looking. They're cool, but then I remembered. Several months ago, uh, when when I, you know, I got those praying mantises, they came for some reason with like 700 live ladybugs. I'm like, I, I and you released. I was them. like, I don't want these to die. I don't know what to do with them. So I kind of just without thinking about it, I just set them free in my backyard. <laughs> and now I'm wondering that if this hell spawn of ladybug <laughs> larvae is because a couple months ago. <laughs> look up, look up ladybugs in California. Are there ladybugs? There, yeah, there are, are. There of are. Of course. There are, like, there are ladybugs. Do, is it known as like a problem? Are there like ladybug seasons where well, they'd be known to be any 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 bug? How does that? How is that a ladybug? It, it's the larva before they evolve. Like it's so cool looking though. Like any bug is a problem though if if there's <clears throat> too many. Like if you if you unbalance the ecosystem, right? Well, not if there are no humans. Mm, that's true. J.K. I'm, I'm just I'm just scared that I I might have. Illegally set off the eco. I, I I'm an eco terrorist, basically. Well, it's not happening here. We that's true. That's we true. We did release ladybugs. I mean, I, we didn't release 700 ladybugs. Well, we 700 also, something like that. It was a lot of ladybugs. Yeah. Uh, also, we haven't checked our neighbors' houses. What if down the street that from the super megaplex? Just well, they're probably ladybugs. loving them. Rich people love ladybugs. That's true. They're the that's one true. bug they can stand. Yeah, I guess so. I'm just I'm just nervous that you know. The uh, the EPA is going to show up at my front door, label me as an eco terrorist, and then imagine going to jail <laughs> for releasing for releasing bugs. like I sentence you to five years in prison for releasing for releasing seven hundred ladybugs and endangering the environment of California. Well, they're so strict in California though about the ecosystems and the environment. Like gerbils are illegal here. Well, it's because oh, you know what season it's about to get into, right? You, you can tell by the heat. No. <laughs> but oh, the fires are going to start happening. Again. Fire season, yeah. Uh oh. Especially it's going to be dry. It's going to be hot. <sighs> Damn, man. There was a huge fire at one point near my house. When, it, when it gets all hot and dry, the fires just. Or you know, people are throwing cigarettes out their window mm -hmm. and shit. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of fires. Uh, what was that? You were like, my mm -hmm. Loquisha impression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of fires are started from a uh, apparently from from homeless camps, or maybe that's just the police. Like, oh, fuck homeless people. They they they're doing the fires. So I don't know. Uh, but fuck, man, fires are terrifying. Oh, imagine living in L.A. All these homeless people starting fires, starting fires, shooting <laughs> their guns off. I heard a ton of gunshots last night. I don't know what I, I don't know. Every time I hear something near my place, I don't know if it's a firework or a gunshot. And it's because I lived in South Carolina, like, cause like in the suburban neighborhoods of South Carolina, you would just hear fireworks, fireworks all the time. Off. Yeah. So, but I'm, but fireworks are illegal in California or at least in LA. I just, County. I just, I just feel like how similar does a gun sound? I mean, think about it. There's to a, to a, Firework. It's a it's a combustion of gunpowder. Both of them are the same thing. I was actually driving near downtown the other day, and I heard a bunch of pa 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 pa. And then I was driving down another street near it, and uh, I, you could smell it was a gun. You could smell like the gunpowder. Really? And then there were cops everywhere, and a helicopter, and um, it's crazy. Usually, I just hear like it's not like a pa pa pa. It's like it sounds like well, it would sound like it would either have to be. Like a heavy, uh, a heavy handgun, like a Magnum, or would have to be a, a shotgun of some kind, because it sounds a little too bassy to just be mm. like a, a a regular handgun. What I heard last, even night, though they are loud, I'm not saying handguns aren't loud. I'm saying 
because I've been around guns, this definitely sounds a lot yeah. beefier. Shotgun blasts are beefy. Yeah. But handguns, uh, I heard last night like six, like pop, 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 pop. And then um, I always wonder if it's fireworks too, but then uh, I there's an app I use to like kind of like see what's going on in the area. And it said like police were investigating like gunshots nearby. So it's crazy how diff- like different, uh, there's just different situations going on. Like to, to you and I, a gun is in a gun to us is a comedic prop. We will use not an actual gun, but to us in our reality, guns are scary. There's a problem with guns. Yes, we know that. But to us in our in our lives, guns are a prop to you to be used in comedy or whatever a music video. But to a lot of people, guns are a day to day tool like that part they of their deem life. is yeah. essential for. Defense and survival. Yeah. What? When's the last time you? I'm not saying that's good. No. Yeah. <laughs> when's the last time you held a gun, like a real gun, or it's, shot a gun? Oh, it's been a, it's been a bit. I've never shot a handgun. It was definitely back. It was in South Carolina at some point. Yeah. I wanted to go to. I've wanted to go to a shooting range. I might see if you want to go with me in California at some point. Yes. Whenever this is over, but uh, I definitely want to. Yeah, go to a shooting range. I don't know. I I, I don't I don't see myself owning a gun per se and that's, and that's it's just for me i have these this weird thought of like if i have a not necessarily that i would do this action but if there was a gun in my house then the possibility of me being shot in the head increases yeah i guess so you know what i mean <laughs> technically of yeah. me dying due to a gun statistically whether speaking. that's myself shooting like me shooting myself in the head uh, or me walking means, in and thinking it's a toy and then shooting you in what, the head with it. Yeah, whether that means, you know, my my mom coming to surprise me at midnight for some reason because she missed her baby and I and I shoot through the door five times. And then the only there's only one bullet left and now that you've killed your mother, there's only one thing to do. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah, I, I I don't see myself owning a gun. Also in I don't, Cal- I don't like I I've had guns in my household many times. I say many times there was one household. My my dad didn't own a gun growing up. My mom and stepdad were the ones who were gun owners. I remember in Columbia, South Carolina, one time uh, for that back, job. Though. Back in the college days, I I went to this random person's house with someone because they were buying marijuana, and there were just guns all over the floor and table, just like a bunch of handguns and stuff. And I was like, I walked in, I was like, oh shit, uh oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I've never shot a handgun. I want to try it. Because shooting guns, like, recreationally is, is pretty fun, I I've will say. Shot, I'm trying to think. I've shot a handgun, well, multi, uh, two different types of handguns. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you the model. I'm sorry. Seriously, dude? Uh, you call sh- yourself a southerner? Shot a shotgun, a bolt-action rifle. Ooh, a and musket? A, yeah, and a bow and arrow. Dude, I used to do archery. I, used to, I was so bad at it, though, because, like, yeah, really... <laughs> It's hard, man. Like it, when you it, pull it back, it's very shaky. I was at this camp thing and I was doing archery and it took me the whole time up until the last day to finally like actually I get like a not just get a good shot because you can get a good shot in. But I'm talking about a good shot I did on purpose where it's like it felt like I did it intentionally because archery seems like it would be just like whoop. Yeah, it's, it's fucking tricky. Like you really got to have a lot of strength and to hold it steady. Mm-hmm. Um, and what else? I've shot it. I shot an AR-15. See, I've never shot. I've never shot a, a semi a, a semi-automatic. It was loud. Rifle. Fuck. It was I, only because the one that I had was just bolt action, where you you know you unload someone else in there. Yep, we just got another fly in the in the cup. Ha uh-huh. ha. Got inside. Fuck the, you. You know what a you know what it is. Right? Yeah, bolt, bolt action. action. Yeah, you you unload one to to essentially chamber another well my, my friend chamber, i i don't speak gun i'm sorry i'm using all the wrong terminology my friend from chick-fil-a when i worked there bought a ar-15 as soon as he turned 18 which is a little bit of a wild thought but yeah. uh he and some co-workers went out shooting at a range so i tagged along i i just i'm always shocked this sounds like the most stupid pussy thing for me to say but mm-hmm. i'm always shocked at how loud guns are whenever i hear a gun i'm like holy shit it's <laughs> yeah. like 50 times louder than anything well, i can there's imagine. a reason like pretty much everyone who is around a gun will have uh, earplugs in. I've also like like even hunters. You'll get the bruise on your uh, shoulder the next day after shooting one because the the kickback. Just That's goes. what happened with the shotgun when I was younger. Yeah, shotguns hurt. They'll they'll leave like a bruise right right on your like collarbone area. I think guns are fun. Guns are fun. They're they're fun they're, to, they're fun also uh, they're fun and scary. Do you think guns? This is a tool you say is fun. Fun you say. 
Well, avast. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out his musket, starts cleaning it. I'll show you danger in five minutes. <laughs> Dude, we got to get into like, can we be like those guys that get really into guns, but only the type of guns like muskets and like cleaning them and stuff? It's like, we don't give a fuck about like modern firearms. We're just obsessed with collecting like old, like uh, pirates pistols and mm-hmm. like cleaning their chambers and stuff. <laughs> I definitely like flintlock pistols. Yeah, like flintlock pistols. <laughs> but uh, I think if... I were I would love like kind of what I would like out of a shooting experience, right? And like for me, what I what I imagine is the perfect experience for myself. It would be going out with some sort of hunting rifle, so what, something with a scope. Ooh. And I like the and I just in a in a large field, you know, and then you have your target and just kind of like aiming and working on that. I like I like the I like the I I like I, I like the I guess it's like the precision, the precision aspect, aspect of, where it's that, like, which I'm not, I wouldn't be any good at and I would need the train, but I, I'm saying I would enjoy the training of being more precise and all that. We should, uh, let's take a hunting trip. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I can't kill animals though. I like, I'm just like, so call me a pussy. I, I can't go. My dad always want to take me hunting and I would always say no. Cause I, I would I'd feel too guilty. I would say I would go hunting and I would try it once, but it, uh, I could I already, I but, but I could already tell you it's not something that I would like. Like shooting a deer and then watching it like scream and then die. I don't think I'd, I, yeah, I, I tend to personify creatures too much. Yeah, me too. I'd be like, oh man, that, that it probably has a lover out <laughs> yeah. in the woods and like a little baby and I just killed it for Meanwhile, for it's like, Eating the rotting asshole of another creature somewhere <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I hunting. Um, I'd probably try it once just to try it, but I'd, I'd, I'd feel. I don't know. I just think things for, I could do for fun that don't involve killing a random animal. Well, I think the thing specifically that, like, in my mind, when it comes to hunting, uh, is that it's like there's no. I'm not saying I want to fight an animal, but the, like, there's no recourse. There's no kind of like way the animal can essentially do anything about it yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it's, you have it's it's the fact that this animal is being attacked and it has no idea what the fuck happened or is going on you shoot it it's like down it's like freaking out it's like what the fuck's going on why does this hurt so much and at the end of the day that's you know i'm i'm still personifying this animal as if it's thinking these things when you know you could argue wouldn't it don't if you are personifying this creature then wouldn't it be better to end it with a bullet than it be eaten alive by a bear or have a broken leg and starve to death while it's slowly being feasted upon by bugs and shit, you know? Like, the thing is, it's like personifying ghosts to a certain extent, and then it's just, oh, nature's nature. But yeah. I don't, the, the other side of that is like, I don't put myself in with nature because we as humans have essentially developed into a very industrial yeah, because like uh, nature, nature, nature is going to be nature. Like I, I get that. But then as soon as I'm pulling the trigger, then I've inserted myself and I'm not nature. At that it feels point. like man versus nature. Yeah. You know, you know, we, we used to be a part of it. I, I feel like I feel we like, are still a part of the general ecosystem and nature in the general aspect. But in terms of when I think of nature, I don't think that we really hold much of much of a place in nature from from another society or aliens point of view. We are, of course, in nature. Cities are nature. You, one of the Isn't things that, that pointed out is I think it was Planet Earth or something was the episode where cities, they yeah. talk about cities. And I'm like, I never thought of cities as kind of like its own jungle-like terrain for it's animals to thrive. You usually think of cities as things that are taking away life, but their new life breeds in these new environments just because things have to adapt. Yeah. When I, I I watched that and when I found out that like cities are classified as an ecosystem, I was like, whoa, never thought of that. That's crazy. And then uh, it got me to kind of view construction sites and all these buildings because usually you see birds on a building. It's like, oh, look, that bird's out of nature in here. But like to that bird, it's like, no, this that is, is nature to the bird. This is you know? it doesn't know any different. Like to this, this is a giant rock. This is just a giant desert of rock. Yeah. Rock and metal. It's funny. Uh, metal. I think it's pigeons. Pigeons or crows or like maybe it's crows. Super, super, super smart birds. Crows and ravens. Yeah, like they'll. I'm sure pigeons are smart in their own way, but I think the ones you're specifically, yeah, crows and ravens. I, just, I, I watched this thing a long time ago about how like smart they are, and they do, solve puzzles. Yeah, yeah, they'll solve puzzles and like 
if there's a nut that they like can't break through, they'll drop it on the street so like cars will run it over and they go get it. It's mm-hmm. like that's super cool. They recognize people. Uh-huh. Yeah, they recognize people. There's there's a lot of here's the thing, there are a lot of intelligent animals. Pigs are very, very intelligent. Um whales are very intelligent. Dolphins. Um octopi, dolphins, um, yeah, octopi, like dogs. I mean, dogs, dogs yeah. and cats are fucking smart as I shit. I mean, relatively speaking, super but, smart. But when we're talking about like intelligent animals, I always think of whales and and crows and ravens. First thing that comes to mind for me is dolphins. And I think that's just because I've been told that so many times. Like dolphins are so smart and they have sex for fun. They do have sex for fun. They they actually have friends. They'll travel in in pack in not packs but in uh, pods of hundreds of different dolphins you fucked the fly got out of the cup dude. oh god damn it he saw his friend's corpse and he got he went in through a tiny little slot and we're like yep he's trapped and he just got out well next time he goes in for another thing I'll tape it up might have to put something over it yeah dude i can't there's so many fucking flies we got to go get some best way to kill flies i found get like a thing of a breeze and then spray them and they can't fly anymore and they die so it's like, you see one sitting, I'm not going to be able to catch it or smack it, just with the breeze real quick. This is, okay, I know this, there was um, the movie The Fly with Jeff Goldblum and the one before it's that. It's a good movie. But, I agree. Wasn't there, I, I'm having this weird nostalgic pull towards an episode of a show on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon where one of the characters starts to disgustingly turn into a fly. There's a Simpsons episode. No, I, that sounds really familiar and it's gross. Yeah. Like, like it, like green goop is kind of like falling out of them. Oh, what is it? Hmm. Dude, I, I'm, it, it's coming back to me. Hmm. We got to look this up real quick. Guys, give us a second. Fly Nickelodeon. I don't know what I would even begin to search. Is it Johnny Bravo? It's an episode called Fly Guy. It might be Johnny Bravo, because I did watch a lot of Johnny Bravo with my with my dad when I was a young tyke. Oh, it might. Is there is is there a? Okay, I I think is there a Courage the Cowardly Dog episode about a fly? Yeah. Is there? Yeah, I, I see it right here. That might be the one that my brain is picking up. Actually, I have to. I'd have to look at it to make sure. I, I do like it, it. It's very oddly what you're saying r- reminds me. I um. A boy who lives down the block accidentally turns courage into a fly. Make sure to check out the plan and one. Okay, I don't, I don't. Whatever. I, 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 I wouldn't be able to give the exact thing, but I just have this. In the comments below, what are your favorite fly, uh, fly episodes of television shows? Breaking Bad, episode titled Fly. Fly. <laughs> you know, it's uh actually on par with a a movie like The Fly. I watched a movie last night that was one of the weirdest grossest movies I've ever seen and made me feel like I was going mentally insane. What? Have you ever seen Eraserhead? By no, David Lynch? I haven't, no. F- fucking terrifying, bizarre movie. Like, it felt like a f- horrible fever dream. Really, re- like... That's Lynch for you, Best right? way I can describe it is is him and his wife or him and this girl give birth... The main character and this girl give birth to, like, a premature fucked up fetus. Okay. And he's taking care of it while going through this like nightmare interesting because the movie i watched was unplanned <gasps> talking about fetuses is that the it's the pure flicks one yeah i don't think it's pure flicks directly it is a rated r an, uh, anti-abortion film though oh you told me about that i also was looking at pure flicks streaming service uh you, you, you were, watch you were over you were over yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we watched a little bit of uh uh dan the malibu man no no it was like Dan the fam- family Ma- Malibu, Dan. Ma- Malibu Malibu Dan, Dan the, the family, family man. man. Okay, yeah. And I I I was in shock at how bad it is. <laughs> um, hold on, just breaking news. Uh, but unplanned, it, it, it it's a good movie. <laughs> you should watch it, dude. I actually do find like unplanned in particular. There are, there are a lot of Christian movies out there or uh, movies with Judeo Christian themes. That uh, I you know can be boring and taxing, but this was entertaining all the way through. Really, there is literally a scene in this where they take a tube, and you see all, and you see it on the um, uh, what is it, the monitor, the ultrasound, mo- the, thing? Mo- the ultrasound monitor. There's this baby, <laughs> and it starts to like look down at the tube, and it starts to like move away, and then the <laughs> tube sucks in one of the legs and rips it off, and then you see like 
uh, the meat and like all the f- all the blood just like go through the tube and like go into this dispenser and then it rips off more legs and then it's flailing around with just its arms and That's then it, how it happens. eventually he's like no! <laughs> and like with its head you can hear it screaming <laughs> the, the, I think the the best part it's probably a memed part in the movie I would imagine if there are reviews on it I haven't seen any but uh, they send a small gun inside you, of her ovary and shoot the baby. You know that that scene, I, I actually started to gag a little bit watching the scene because I was like, "This is just gross. I don't want to think about a baby being mulched into into meat." Well, maybe you should think about that before you side with political opinions you don't fully know the knowledge of, Ryan. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, but it was. Um, do you do you want to know what the doctor says right before this? This disgusting scene what? of of the murder of this the murder of this baby Jesus child. What? Beam him up, Scotty. He does. He goes. He goes. Beam him up, Scotty. And then he turns the machine on, and then it starts to suck up the baby. And then it's just damn. It, it's go. It goes crazy. There's this one That's badass. There's this one scene where the villain of the abortion clinic is like, come come to the back room. And they go, and then splayed out on this table is this cut up fetus, and it's like, put the fetus back together. And so then she, the what? the woman like takes the fetus with tweezers and is like, moving the little digits and placing it. This is what happens at Planned Parenthood, guys. <laughs> and she's like, you know what's happened to every person that has come into this room? They cry, they break down in tears, but not you, because you're the one. You're the one that take my place here. It's it's like this big <laughs> Star Wars. There's even a part in the movie where they unveil this new abortion center that's essentially like the Death Stars of abortion centers. Whoa. The Death Star of abortion center. It's like it's like um the Death and, Star of abortion <laughs> centers. <laughs> they 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 are of Planned well in the movie they're just essentially abortion the centers. The clinics, yeah. Yeah. I mean they're called Planned Parenthood, but anyways, uh, so they unveil it and it's like, with this, we'll be able to increase the amount of abortions we give by 50%. <gasps> and it's just like, oh no! Dude, they're going to start ripping it's... women off the street and forcing them to get abortions. <laughs> uh, one of, I think one of the producers of this film, or someone having to do with this film. I they were aborted? No, but he gets a part, he gets like a cameo appearance in it where he's the one that gets to tear down the pan, the Planned Parenthood with a tractor. No, he, he runs in with a machine gun <laughs> and, he, and he does the, the bravest act in American history. It's just funny because throughout the whole movie, this girl who has a job, who's a director at Planned Parenthood, she's like... Is, is the every, movie about Planned Parenthood, like by name? Like do they call it Planned Parenthood? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, um, but every time she's with her family, because her family's super Christian, her husband's Christian... And every time she's talking about the kind of her job, her dad, her mom, her husband, anyone in the scene looks like this. <laughs> it's like that, like, ooh, what were you ah, thinking, Greg? You could be doing much better than this. I'm gonna have to give this a watch now. I think I think it's it's entertaining enough to where you and Harrison would 100 percent cackle throughout. I'm excited. Harrison would definitely cackle. I throughout. I definitely uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's that's our that's what Harrison sounds like. When Harrison gets really when his fancy is tickled, he shrieks and howls. <laughs> like and he a, does that. It's like a exactly. chimpanzee. <laughs> I know. Uh, I have some breaking news to report real quick. Yeah, uh, it's about COVID nineteen. It was all a fake. We no, can go uh, back out to living our lives now. Joe Joe Biden uh, farted uh, today during <laughs> what? <laughs> during <a> live <laughs> what? No, he didn't. I'll play it. I haven't watched it yet, but. Stop work on roads and bridges. So. <laughs> Stop work on roads and bridges. So. You know how easy it would be for me though to just take like any clip from like a movie interview. It was on a live stream any, though. Everyone no, saw it. What I'm saying is how easy it would for me to just pick anything. Like let's think of Ben Shapiro on his podcast. I'm like, could you believe what Ben Sh- Shapiro has said? I do like a five second clip. Where he's like. I fucking uh, hate little boys. They make me sick. I I wish they were big boys instead, or whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> That's ben his sh- most controversial. <laughs> whatever Ben says, I don't know. But uh, just like adding f- a fart in there, just adding a fart in any serious interview. Enough people would think it's real. Yeah, well, that's the right. Thing it would like- spread around enough to where it would do not damage, but damage in, in the in sense, the sense of like, of, oh, he farted, ha yeah. ha, like middle school damage. Well, dude, yeah. here's the thing. If if I was running Joe Biden's live streams for him, <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
Sorry, I saw something. Um, if I was running Joe Biden's live streams, it'd be so easy for me to queue up a fart sound effect and just halfway through this. <laughs> Click it and it does uh-huh. it, and there's no way he'd ever disprove it. He'd I know, be like, no, I like, didn't actually. You were like, I, hey, I was. I wish someone like on CNN or Fox or MSNBC or what any any stupid big news organization. I wish they would just have little people in there that would fuck with shit every now and then. So like when they're live, they'd just be like, put in this far sound and just give them. Just, just. Uh-huh. <laughs> God, the thing is, it's. Uh, I think I think putting a fart sound effect over someone is so funny because it just. No matter what they're saying, it instantly brings it back to like a fourth grade level of uh, when, when, like when I did it to Dan. That's what I was about exactly. to bring it up. The I, I infamous Dan the moment, there. like uh, the infamous Dan. Which, moment. by the way, I was reading like I was going to you know I venture into the the nether regions of the internet sometimes to look up stuff about whether it's us, you know. But someone legitimately believes that that edit was one of the catalysts for us being quote unquote let go from Game Grumps. <laughs> Like people think that uh, Dan just we were fired it. because because I put a fart sound effect in episode five of uh, some Zelda game they were playing. Great! It is it is weird to see the many like the many different quote unquote historical factual outcomes uh, of our life because I, I read stories that I'm in but I have no recollection of. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They were fired from Game Grumps. Uh, my favorite of the is the conspiracy we were fired from Game Grumps for those edits. Like, yeah. like we messed with Dan's face. Oh, uh, the, my favorite one that I ever read was a legitimate conspiracy that we were let go because of the uh, Brent had had enough of the, the of the, the smelly, smelly penis, penis jokes. jokes. And he, he probably didn't like. I mean, he doesn't no, like him. I'm gonna be like, of course, Brent doesn't. Brent's a good sport about <laughs> Brent, it. and his smelly dick. Brent texted me. I can't remember if I shared this on the podcast, but he texted me probably like two weeks ago or so. Let me see. Yeah, and he was just like. Yeah, May 13th. He said, do you at least edit it so that I sound funny when you put in these calls? And I'm guessing we called him during a Let's Play. And he felt, and that got back to him. Damn. Well, Brent, here's the thing. Uh, you, you can't, you, there's only so much we can edit to make it funny. <laughs> if, if you're not funny, you're not funny, Brent. I, That's well, just... I had to tell him, I said, you are funny, Brent. And then. So you lied to him. Yeah. I, I even sent him a GIF. Oh, what gif? It's a. Uh, is it an office gif? Yep. Oh no, it's Steve Brule. Steve Brule. I thought I thought that I was Jim. No, I know my go to is the office. The, the thing is, whenever I send you the office, or like if it's in a group text, I'm hoping to God that people don't think it's serious. Don't think I'm using it as a legit reaction. <laughs> I do that too. Sometimes. On Are Twitter. there times though where I send you the office gifts or no? I, I feel- never think it's serious. <laughs> okay, good. Never. Were you- I always get it. I always get it. And I sometimes I'll reply on Twitter. Like my favorite gift to use on Twitter is the one of Drake at the basketball game standing <laughs> yeah. up and clapping. And I'm always scared that like new followers or people that follow me think I'm legitimately using like office gifts or like <laughs> using the one of Drake standing up and clapping because I because I like it. Dude, I, I respect and I and I and I honestly like Office as a show. But it's just something about its fan base that has created this this <laughs> this environment of cringe when it comes oh, to yeah, the yeah. gifts. Like just any any I love Michael Scott gift. <laughs> Me my, too. The, no! God no! no! God no! That, that's such a good one, dude. Oh man. I, I remember that it. being on Vine. Remember there's things cutting away to that specific clip on Vine? Yep. Probably like for like 50% of the vines that I watched in one given like, week. I, I ice cream machine. Like, can I get an ice cream? Oh, ice cream machine broke. No! <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> yeah, dude, it's uh, it's been a good episode though. We got yeah. plenty of flies to go kill. Uh, we gotta go commit fly aside. Oh no, we do. There's there's a lot of flies that need to be killed. Well, hold on, let me get my gun. <sighs> Here we go. Ooh, ooh, I got one. What a big ass one. Ooh, I got another one. Matt Duck. Matt Duck. 